Hey everybody, Alex here. Today we are doing an ML benchmark test. What is an ML benchmark test? Well, it's machine learning benchmark and this was actually submitted by mDenti. So right here I have uh, mDenti's repository which has the benchmark that he created. Uh, this is presumably to keep track of all the different machines and their speeds in processing machine learning algorithms. So here we have uh, a Python project and it's basically there to recognize digits. So you can just write on a pad you give it a model to learn and it's going to spit out what you drew. And this is based on the MNIST data set. You can read more about this. I'll leave a link down in the description. And if you want to run this test yourself, you can. The repository is open source. Download it. It's got instructions on how to install it and how to run it. That's what I've done here on these three machines. Actually, I've done it only on one machine, but I'm going to do it on these two so you can see how I do it as well. So this is the MacBook Air M1. This is the MacBook Pro 16 inch and it's got the M1 Pro chip in it. And this one, same thing, but it's got the M1 Max chip in it. We're going to run this project on all three of these and see what the result will be. We'll see which one of these is going to be faster. Now, a lot of you have been asking me to or test TensorFlow, and that's what this is using. This is using TensorFlow to do the machine learning. So we're going to test that out right now. All right, first things first, let's install this. As a side note, a lot of you asked me to do different tests. So is this one. This one has been asked by one of you commenters, M. Denti. So thank you for creating the project and for pointing me to it and for leaving clear set of instructions. I think we all learn and we all get results when it's a comment that's constructive like that. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so I've got my Conda environment set up. And I'm going to create a new environment. I'm going to call it ML Bench. By the way, if you don't know what I'm doing here, I'm creating a new environment for Python execution. And I have a video on how to do that on Apple Silicon machines. I'll link to that down below if you are not familiar with that process. All right, Conda environment created. Now we're going to activate the environment. Conda activate ML Bench. And you'll see that I'm here now in my ML Bench environment, which has, I believe by default, the version of Python would be 2.7. Yeah. So we need to update version of Python. Conda install Python equals 3.8. All right. That's uh, the required version of Python as per the instructions here. Oh, uh, one little difference between this instruction set and what I'm doing is they're using PyEnv to manage the environment for Python. I'm using Conda, Anaconda. So just a different preference. I like uh, using that one. Some people like using PyEnv, but the end result is the same. It gives you an isolated Python execution environment. Next is we need to clone the repository here. Git clone, actually, I'll just paste that in. All right, I've cloned it. Let's go into that directory. Now for Apple Silicon, this works a little bit differently. With Apple Silicon, you have to install these special packages here. You can execute this whole line probably, and this will get you what you need. I'm going to do this one step at a time here to uh, kind of explain what's going on. So Conda install TensorFlow dependencies. This is a separate library for all the dependencies before you run TensorFlow and its Apple version of the architecture. Next, some more installations, <laughs> TensorFlow Mac OS. So I'm just going to go through these and install these one by one. And I'm also doing it one by one. So if there's any errors that happen in any step, I know which one was the problem. OpenCV, that one's familiar because I've done an open CV test before here, testing the M1 Mac, that of course being a computer vision library. And finally, Python MNIST. And that's probably the data set that we need to, uh, to do this uh, number recognition learning. Okay, so we've got everything on there. The next thing to do is launch it. So right here. Python W benchmark PY. Now I'm going to set that up. And before I hit enter, I want to set this up on all the other machines so that we can run this test pretty much at the same time and see who finishes first. So I've got this set up now on all the three machines here. Let's uh, go ahead and get going. So this actually opens up a UI. Um, Python quit unexpectedly over here in the MacBook Air. Hmm. I'm not sure what's going on over there. Let me try that again. So I've got the UI open on both of these. This is the UI for the learning and it's reporting the uh, logs as it's learning. But on the MacBook Air, this is not opening. Sorry, folks, it's gonna have to be a machine against machine. Well, of course, I mean, M1 Pro against the M1 Max. So that's what we're doing today, I guess. I don't know what's going on with the uh, MacBook Air on this one. Maybe it doesn't like some installation I did. All right, so here's how it works. You can set the number of epochs and the neural network size. Some of these take a lot of time to build and to train. We're going to stick with 20 because that's pretty reasonable. And I'm going to click on launch training. Let's do it at the same time on both of these. And let's go. Now is the magical time of my testing when I wait. 
<laughs> ah, look at this. The Max is a little bit ahead than the Pro. That's interesting. Okay. Maybe it's a sign of what's to come. Maybe not. We'll see. While this is going on, I want to take a look at the activity monitor to see what's happening over there. So here's Python running and it's looking like it may be using more than one core. It is using the GPU. So that's pretty cool. And that's interesting because my M1 Max has more GPU cores than my M1 Pro. This one has uh, 16. That one has 32. We'll see if that plays a big part here. But the CPU usage is the same. It's hovering around 125 on both of these machines. The GPU GPU usage is hovering around 99% on both of these machines. Interesting. I believe this is the first test that I'm running here that's actually using the GPU directly, which is pretty cool. All right. And I guess it's done. This one finished first. The M1 Pro finished first. That's surprising to me. The total training time for the M1 Pro was 115 seconds and this one was 120 seconds and of course you probably want to run this several times to get an average and that's what i'm going to do now let's go again and after this is done i'm going to skip forward in the video to the end and we'll get the results all right now this ran through two more times and i got some results and the results are pretty consistent so uh i'm gonna throw it up on the screen right now you can see that uh we're about 10 seconds off which is pretty interesting i would expect the m1 max having more memory more cores of gpu of course and uh i would have expected that one to do this faster but uh well here we go these are real results and sometimes we get real failures here as well i want to show everything that's possible like the m1 macbook air didn't run this at all it's probably a configuration issue but this is real this is what happens out there when you're trying this out and configuring stuff and sometimes you run into failures but it's still interesting to see that consistently the m1 pro has beat out the m1 max here in this case now i do have all these other things running on the m1 max i'm gonna quit all my programs and run this one more time just to see if having any of that open is going to play any effect and i'm also going to quit this benchmarker and run it one more time just so that we're fresh i'm also not too familiar with this data set from what it looks like it's feeding in different visuals different cards to train the model and i'm guessing that it has a data set and it's picking randomly which ones to train that could also have an effect here Although that shouldn't really affect an average. So over an extended period of time of testing, that should average out. But still, we saw that the consistency was there. The M1 Pro was beating this one by 10 seconds. Okay, <laughs> this one finished first again. Yeah, we're pretty consistent here, folks. There you have it, folks. That was ML with TensorFlow. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. And if that subscribe button is red, it should be gray. Tap it and make it gray, please. That's what happens when you tap it. It turns gray and it helps me out, helps out the channel, and you won't miss any more videos because more are on the way. Thanks a lot, folks. I'll see you next time.